Welcome to This Week in Acts. When we come to Acts chapter 10, Luke is ready to show how the church made the giant leap to allow or include Gentiles to join the Christian movement. This represents a huge moment in religious history. The notion that God wants people of all tongues and races in his family may not shock us, but in the Jewish Christian churches of the first century, this was quite a revelation. What is clear from chapters 10 and 11 is that God intended all along for the Gentiles to share in the blessings of Abraham. There in those chapters, Luke tells us that this movement is to include Gentiles in God's forever family and that this movement, this initiative, well, it was made by God himself. It is God who gives the Gentile centurion Cornelius a vision that instructs him to send for Peter. It is God who gives Peter a vision that eventually instructs him to go to Caesarea and share the good news of Jesus with Cornelius and with his whole household. Then it is God who pours out his spirit on these Gentiles. Well, that seals the deal for Peter. Can anyone refuse water for these people to be baptized? He responds, since they have received the Holy Spirit just as we did. The function of this section is to bring Peter to the next stage of insight. He's beginning to grasp what God wants. He is coming to see that it is not membership in a particular nation or the observance of its specific customs that makes one acceptable to God. Then we come to chapter 11, where Peter is forced to defend his actions before his Jewish critics. Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them, they ask. We might want to notice that it is not the other apostles who have a problem with what Peter has done. No, it's the circumcised believers who demand an explanation. The issue they pose is one of table fellowship. The question is, can Jewish Christians share meals with Gentile Christians? Are these Gentile members of God's people of equal status with those who first believed? The problem here is a real one. For a Jew to eat without attending to ritual purity or to dietary regulations meant a loss of identity. What Peter's opponents imply is that by his being willing to eat with Gentiles, he has abandoned his own heritage as a Jew and has also jeopardized the identity of this new community that has been forming as the people of God. So Peter kindly reviews everything that happened in order to convince his critics that God was supportive, well, indeed the force behind everything that happened. Here are the points I want to highlight in this video for us. Number one, God wants us to take the gospel of Jesus to the whole world. This is our mission. It is what our Lord and Master wants, and we must not disappoint Him. Number two, there are no second-class citizens in the kingdom of God. People in our churches who are of a different race or nationality from us are not less a part of the body than we are. People in our churches who have been followers of Jesus or who have been in our church family less time than we have are not less a part of the body than we are. Single adults and teenagers, widows and widowers, young women and older women who are in our church family, they are not less a part of our family than we are. There are no second-class citizens in God's family. And number three, just as God was at work in the first century world to accomplish his purposes then, so he is surely at work in our 21st century world to accomplish his purposes today. 
he is at work. And we can find comfort and encouragement in that thought. And let's be sure to join him in his work.